Welcome to The Steve Show. Today we're gonna to talk about systems. How do you structure your business or your job, it can be both, so you can have more freedom in your life. So often when we think about freedom, we think about sometimes a picture will come to your mind of a feather blowing in the wind. And then you wonder who really has the power in that? It's the wind, right? And there are times in your life, and I've enjoyed it, where you kind of just go with the wind and you just do that. But if you do that for a prolonged period of time, then some of the desires you have in your life don't come about. What I found, and this is, this is true for me, like whatever, you, maybe you find a different way in your life, but for me, when I've added structure, and I wanna specifically talk about systems today, when I add that structure, I've actually had more freedom, and more profound freedom, more amounts of time in my life, because I've structured things so I can get things done faster, smarter, and be done with it. So those work elements that are maybe consuming more of your time than you'd like, and you wanna go have more play time with your family or yourself, or you wanna go on more holidays or travel, you know, by systemizing things, it allows that to happen. If you're in business for yourself, if you're self-employed, you have a small business, even if you have staff already, putting the systems in place allows you to have the freedom. If you don't put the systems in place, you'll one, probably never be able to sell your business. Two, you're probably having staff leave, right? They come and go, you have a lot of turnover because even staff will prefer the systems because when, when a business owner knows what needs to happen and they've had it spelled out, by far, they're gonna be more likely to do the job. Just think about anything in your life when you've had clarity, when you know where you're going, then it's so much easier and even it's more exciting to get up. Think about in the morning when you get up and you don't know what's gonna happen, then all of a sudden it's not as fun. When you know exactly what you need to do and where you're gonna go, there's something to do with that. So you just get up and you do it and everything goes a bit smoother. And so I want to um, start to share a little bit about that so that you can start having more structure and systems in your business. The first thing, and I'll just write some things out here, the first thing you need to do is have a core purpose. Core purpose. And this is key because why are we doing anything? If you're going to give a system to a staff member or if you have partners in your business, why are you doing what you're doing? For me, my mission, my core purpose is to help as many people have the freedom they desire. So now the business is all built around that and all the tasks have a purpose. So even the most um, remedial thing you know, like um, taking care of paperwork or, you know, maybe with one of my trainings, we have booklets and we have changes in those and maybe something has to be reprinted or something happens. In that, um, there's uh, an, a, an idea, a love or a care or a reason to have it because we need the booklets to train people to be able to allow them to have a difference, to have some transformation in their life. And even though it's like paperwork, it might not be so much fun, but when it has purpose behind it, then you want to get it done because you want to help your um, clients or customers. And so when there's more purpose behind it, now it's easier to have it be done. And even you'll find staff members get more excited about doing things because they know that there's a bigger picture behind it, why we're doing it, and we can drive towards that. So this is a huge thing before you even make your systems. Then the next thing I would do um, is, let's see, I'm just picking a color here. Let's go with blue. So if you look at it, then the next thing you want to do is figure out a little bit of the organization, right? So when you look at your org, we'll just put it for short here, organization, what are the things that you need? And now it's going to be different for every one of your businesses and your, your, and your job. If you're, if you're an executive and you're structuring things for your staff or even for yourself, we'll talk about that in a second. But just in general, if we were to generalize things, there's three things, main focuses or main departments in business. You have uh, leads, which also could be marketing. Um, 
And then that leads to sales, right? Because if we have leads or we have people coming into the business, now this is a department because people have to figure out a way. How are we going to get leads? How are we going to bring attention? How are we going to do the marketing to bring attention to what we're doing? Then we have to have conversations. We have to know how are we going to take someone from someone that's curious to someone that's committed to want to do something. And then you have your product or your service. Right? And so we have the, and I'm just doing these in three general buckets. Now, each of these would need to have a process, you know, so that's where we go, we go next. So in this organization, which will come back, then you have to have a process, right? So now, and so it's defining this. So coming back, the first step is finding out why you're doing something. The second step is what, what is going to happen and who's going to do it. So in this, I made three general things, but you want to do this by staff. Like how many positions do you need? So in this, you might have a subset. You know, you might have, you know, copywriters that are helping here. You might have, you know, you might, what is your marketing? Maybe you're not even spending money on advertising, but you're going out to networking events or different. There's a system for that. How are we doing it? And, um, and in that becomes a process to figure that out. So then it's like, what's the step? Oh, for instance, just for marketing, if you're going to go to events and you decide, you know what? I need to go to more events this year. Well, then what you would do is you would say, I'm going to go to one event a month. Okay. So the process is I'm going to go to one event a month. What type of event? We can write that out. We can say how many people should be at that event. We can start to decide what the process should be. Um, you know, like if you're expanding, you know, like here I am in the San Francisco Bay area, maybe I'm going to do events around San Francisco, but then maybe the next month I might go to Sacramento or, or Los Angeles. And then after that, maybe I'm going to go to Portland or Las Vegas. And so I can start to create a system of some sort of target around that and, and be able to have that. And I'm going to talk a little bit more. I want to add one more thing on here. Um, and that is tracking. And, and then we'll, we'll structure this. So this is the steps to do the job, we'll call it, whatever, it's a, whatever the job is. So in this, we have to figure out what are all the things that we need to do? What are the things we need to do to make the product? What are the things we need to do to deliver the service? What are the steps that it takes? And yes, we have to write this out. And you might be working right now and you're, you're running the business and you're like, how am I going to have time to write all this out? Well, you're going to do it one at a time, one thing at a time. So what I focus on are the things that I don't want to do as much. Uh, being an entrepreneur, there's a lot of times I've worn many hats. There's times in my life where I've done all three of these. I'm providing the service, I've done the sales, and I created the leads. And in that, um, there were certain things I didn't want to do as much as the other. There's certain things that my heart, I love doing, and there's certain things I didn't love doing. I ultimately did them all because my core purpose drove me to do it. But ultimately, when I was doing these uh, things, there's certain things I didn't want to do as much. So those are the things I would suggest that you start with because you want to systemize one thing at a time. And when you systemize it, you write the step by step. Even if it feels ridiculous writing down the steps, like you have to go to the office, you have to print this paper, you have to do this. What are the exact steps that need to be done? Because then guess what? If you, didn't ha if you couldn't do the job, you could hand it to someone, they could read that process and have a good chance of getting it done. Now, sometimes there's gonna be some additional training and when you're going through the steps, you're gonna need to go over it with your staff or whoever you're delegating to but you want to write it as simple as possible. The more simple and the more detailed it is step by step, the easier it is. The easier it is to employ people. This is where like books like E-Myth or if you look at franchising, like things like McDonald's, whether you like the food or not, there's one thing that they do have. They have a serious system. So anybody can come into the job, whether they know how to cook or not, right, or really heat things up, right, then they would basically be able to go in there and run that system, whatever job it is, you know, so that's where people can hire someone that doesn't, they don't have that much experience 
and they have a good system. That's why a lot of times when you see uh, companies advertising for jobs, it says no experience necessary. It's probably because they have a really good process and step-by-step -step system that's easily uh, trainable um, and then they can have that happen. And this way allows people to grow with the company, which is a beautiful thing. Um, so, so you're writing the step-by-step -step process for one thing at a time and most likely the thing that you want to delegate first. And then once that's accomplished, go back and look in your organization, where's the next system that I should start writing it up and then get that system read, uh, written so that it can be read by whoever's going to do the job. And then coming to tracking, we, we are going to look at what's working and what's not working. You know, so you're tracking and in the tracking, you're looking at the system itself. So for instance, as you create a process for sales, you can say, okay, the process is that I'm going to contact six people a day and in hopes to book one meeting. If I book one meeting a day and you did that five days a week, that means I'd have five sales meetings. And in those meetings, hopefully I close one to two of them into doing business with me. And so that means it are two sales a week enough? Maybe if you're selling a high-end product, that would be a beautiful week for somebody. Maybe they need to close 10 sales a day or more. So you have to decide what does that sales look like and then track that. Then say, okay, how did I do today? How did I do yesterday? And so if you create a simple spreadsheet, even if it was just an Excel spreadsheet or you use Google uh, Docs, you can just put a simple spreadsheet and say, I talked to 12 people today and three people wanted a meeting. And then the, tomorrow you talk to, you know, eight people and four people wanted a meeting. Then, and if it goes crazy, like one day you, you talk to eight people and eight people want a meeting, then by tracking that, I'm like, where was I? What event was I at that that many people wanted to talk to me? Because then that makes a difference because then if I look at the process again, then I can refine and say, I should only go to this event because I get the highest result. You know, again, I just brought up the book E-Myth. If you've never read that, it's, it's uh, some parts are a bit dated, but not by much. The core principles of it are far from dated. They're exactly what you need to look at um, because what happens is you need to look at this system very, very seriously so that you can then have the result that you want in your business, in your life. And... Um, that, and it talks just a lot about, about this. That's why I brought up that, that book. And so these are the simple ways. There's so many other layers to systems, but these are the core. I thought if I were to put together a short video like this, so you can actually start making an impact in your life and in your business, then, then it would be beautiful. And ultimately, you want a written step-by-step -step guide for every part of your business because then you can completely hire someone else for everything that you're doing and, and no longer do any of them, right? If you relieve yourself of all these duties, you just simply become the owner of your business and then you can, uh, you can move on. And the same for those, I did say that this can work for being in a job because whatever the tasks are for your job, you can then systemize things so you can do it quicker. I also uh, can tell you whenever you systemize things, actually my brother, while he was acting in Southern California, he got into the serving business and restaurant business. And he has a great personality and he would bring in tips far greater than any other server. Like a lot, like sometimes he'd be in like an average restaurant, not even a high end one. And people are averaging like $80 in tips. My brother was making like $300 in tips. And then I was like, well, how can you teach this to other people? Because other servers were saying, Hey, how the heck did you do this? And I said, what specifically are you doing? And is it just your charisma or is there other things? And when we broke it down, there was six significant things. And I don't remember off the top of my head, but he's like, these are the six things that I, that I typically do. As soon as he wrote down the system himself, he himself increased his tips by over 30%. I think we calculated it was like 31% increase in his own tips because he said, you know what? I never did all six of them at every table. So just by him writing out his own process, he actually increased his own business just with him before he even started training anyone else. And now he's an award-winning trainer in restaurants because he's been able to start showing other people exactly what he was doing. It's really hard to show anyone what you're doing if you don't have it written out. 
And I promise you, if you write it out, you're even going to do better in your own business, in your own life, because you can start doing it the same way over and over. And what does that do? If you start tracking that, you're going to start seeing consistent and predictable results. And I even had one uh, client that I worked with that had uh, started implementing systems into his business or into his position as a, as a director. And he started not showing up at work as much because he didn't need to. It was going really, really well. He actually got brought into a meeting to get reprimanded because he wasn't showing up in the office enough. And then he said, are you guys done? And they're like, no, we're not done. We're about to fire you. And he said, well, I just want to show you what's going on in my department um, you know, to add this to the discussion. And he showed what he was doing and he was far exceeding every other department in the country. This was a nationwide company. And they're like, oh my gosh, what are you doing different? And he ended up getting promoted to train other departments where he was about to get fired because he was doing things so efficiently, he didn't need to be there grinding away doing so many hours. So you might change your company, you might change your position just by writing out the system because you're gonna be able to do it better. When there's a system, it can be tracked. And when it can be tracked, so when you add this process and then you track that process, now you can improve the process and thereby improve your position, improve your company, delegate where you need to so you can have more life, more revenue. And so these four things are so important. Know why you're doing it. Organize what departments, and if it's not departments, um, tasks. If it's just one position, what are the subtasks that need to get done to have this core purpose be uh, viable and to have a result? And then out of those tasks, what's the process? What's the step-by-step? -step? So you see, we're even breaking this down into step-by-step. -step. What are the step-by-steps that you need to do to accomplish these tasks or these positions for this role to give you the core purpose? And then in all of that, we track the performance on that. How is it going with that system? How is it working out? How can we improve it? And then you keep improving the system. And these four steps can give you so much freedom in your life as it has for me. And I'm still uh, perfecting my systems. I'm going to continue to do so. Every year, in fact, we're going to look at things and say, how can we do it better? Are there any tweaks to the system? Are there any new positions that we need to make sure that we're living to our core purpose? And then how are we tracking that for improvement? So go forward, just give this a try for one thing. Take one task in your business that maybe you don't like doing or one that's a big deal, maybe one that's time consuming and start implementing these steps and, and then try it out. What do you have to lose, right? I, I, there's a ton to gain, I'll promise you that. So let me know how this goes. Ask me questions. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'm going to be sending more content. I'm going to be doing more videos just like this. And your questions and comments help drive what I teach. So if you want me to dive deeper in a certain area in here, because there's so much more, I could talk about systems, but this is just the basics to get started, then please let me know in the comments. Ask questions so that I can then know where to go next for one of our next episodes. And most importantly, even answer your questions right here in this thread. So until next time, remember, as always, choose gratitude and create freedom.